We are live from New Delhi. You're watching Dear India Live, India's voice to the world. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. Coming up in the next 30 minutes. Setting a new landmark in India, Bhutan, enduring friendship. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurates a state-of-the-art hospital in Thimphu, built with India's assistance. More than 60 people killed and over 145 wounded after gunmen attack a concert venue in Moscow. Islamic State claims responsibility. World condemns the attack. Princess of Wales Kate Middleton reveals cancer diagnosis in a heartwarming video message, says she is undergoing treatment after surgery. In sports, Kidambi Shrikant storms into Swiss Open semi finals, registers straight game win over Lee Shia Hao. Successfully concluding his two-day state visit to Bhutan, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, his plane has landed in fact in New Delhi. A special visit ends with yet another special gesture. His Majesty the King of Bhutan, Jigme Khesa Namgyal Wangchuk as well as PM Sharing Top Gai, both came to see off PM Modi at the airport. Earlier today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi together with PM Sharing Top Gay of Bhutan inaugurated the Gyalswin Jatsun Pema Mother and Child Hospital in Thimphu. The state-of-the-art hospital is a shining example of India-Bhutan development cooperation. On a two-day visit to the Himalayan Kingdom, Prime Minister Modi announced further support of 10,000 crore rupees or 1.25 billion US dollars to the neighboring country's 13th development plan. Prime Minister of Bhutan Sharing Top Cake extended his gratitude to India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi for rupees 10,000 crore assistance to the Himalayan nation. Bhutan was honored to receive Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji on a two day state visit to Bhutan. The two day state visit couldn't have gone any better. He was welcomed with open hearts by every citizen of Bhutan. And uh, this visit, this historic visit, is going to further strengthen the already strong relations between our two countries and our two people. Indian naval ship Kolkata, which was deployed for anti-piracy operations, arrived in Mumbai today with 35 Somali pirates on board. The pirates were handed over to the Yellow Gate police. The ship was deployed in Gulf of Aden for anti-piracy operations. The Indian Navy intercepted the vessel with the destroyer INS Kolkata, confirming armed pirate activity on board. Has more in the ground report by Deed India correspondent Shishir Shalom. The Indian naval ship has taken a big action against the piracy. The Indian naval ship INS Kolkata was in Gulf of Aden when they got the tip about the piracy operations. Well, this is INS Kolkata, individuals you can see, which has carried out the anti-piracy operation in Gulf of Aden and have captured 35 Somali pirates in the region. When the INS Kolkata got the tip about this ship, they immediately swung into action and captured the ship. Well, these Somali pirates have actually captured the ship a couple of months back and they made the MS Ruin vessel as a main vessel and therefore they've started their anti-piracy operation across. It took nearly 40 hours for the Indian naval ship to capture vessel MS Ruin and later on 35 Somali pirates have been surrendered. Well this entire, entire operation along with INS Kolkata, INS Subhadra was also participated. Indian parachuters, the Marcos Commandos were also part of the operation. They have been parachuted in the region and later on the entire anti-piracy operation was carried out. Well currently these Somalian pirates have been handed over to the local police and the further action will be taken against those pirates here. But it's proof that how Indian Navy is committed towards safeguarding the trade routes also connecting various countries, which is quite important for the economic growth as well. 
Shishalar for DD India, Mumbai. Now let's get you the latest on what's happening in India in the run-up to the world's largest democratic election in India. Bharatiya Janata Party on Friday released the fourth list of its candidates for the upcoming general elections focusing on Puducherry and Tamil Nadu seats. The 15-member list featured P. Karthiyayini from Chidambaram constituency in Tamil Nadu. Actor and politician Radhika Sarat Kumar will contest from Virudnagar in Tamil Nadu. BJP has also fielded A. Namasteva Yam from Puducherry and Rama Srinivasan from Madurai, among others. And the Opposition Congress Party held its meet on Friday and finalized its candidates for Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh and the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Party President Malikarjun Khadge and other members including Rahul Gandhi and K.C. Venugopal attended the meeting. And the EVMs or the electronic voting machines have revolutionized the election process in India and are now being used in almost all polls being conducted by the Election Commission of India. Now here is a report on the unique story of the EVMs. Electronic voting has become a hallmark of elections in India. Voting is done through the electronic voting machine or the EVM, which is a device used to electronically record and count votes. The Indian EVM system is also called ECI EVM, meaning an EVM specifically designed, manufactured, indigenously and used as per the Election Commission's rule. EVMs were first used in the Parur Assembly constituency in the southern state of Kerala in 1982. They were used in all 543 lower house constituencies during the 2004 general elections. An EVM consists of the ballot unit and control unit. To make the system more transparent, the voter verifiable paper audit trail or VVPAT was introduced. It was used across all the constituencies during the 2019 general elections. So how does an EVM VVPAT work? People cast their vote by pressing the button on the ballot unit next to the name and symbol of the candidate of their choice. A paper slip showing the details of the candidates is generated and is visible for about 7 seconds through the transparent window of VVPAT. The ECI EVM can record a maximum of 2000 votes. To better understand EVM's efficiency, it is important to look at how they fare in comparison to paper ballots which were earlier used in general elections. Alright, so Prime Minister Narendra Modi has landed in New Delhi after concluding his two-day visit to neighboring Himalayan nation Bhutan. We are getting you these visuals. Prime Minister Narendra Modi landing in New Delhi after a two-day visit to Bhutan. He attended the inauguration ceremony of Gyalswin Jatsun Pema Mother and Child Hospital in Thimpu today. And yesterday he was conferred with order of the Druk Gyalpo, which is Bhutan's highest state honor. It was given by the Bhutanese king Jigme Khesa Namgyal Wang Chuk. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi dedicated this award to 140 crore Indians. And on a two-day visit to Bhutan, Prime Minister Modi announced further support of 10,000 crore rupees or 1.25 billion US dollars to the neighboring country's 13th development plan. All right, we'll go across to Vishal Barasto. He is joining us on the phone line. Vishal, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reached New Delhi after a successful two-day visit from Bhutan. A special visit ended with a special gesture. King of Bhutan and PM of Bhutan uh, Coming to see your Prime Minister Narendra Modi, successful visit overall? Well, absolutely a very successful visit and uh, especially keeping in mind uh, the general elections that have been announced in India and Prime Minister making a visit to Bhutan, making it very clear that his vision uh, is uh, absolutely crystal clear as mm. far as neighborhood first policy is concerned. And uh, the Bhutanese uh, Prime Minister also saying that uh, the prime, uh, he expects uh, the Prime Minister third term uh, for the successful bonding between the two countries also uh, 
is can be uh, underlined and also can be highlighted as far as uh, the highlight of uh, this visit and india uh, claiming and also uh, strengthening its ties uh, with bhutan under its uh, neighborhood first policy and also announcing uh, 10000 crore aid uh, to bhutan in its uh, five, five year plan uh, it is all underlines india's uh, pr- commitment towards uh, bhutan and uh, both countries uh, they acknowledge each other's uh, friendship uh, we know that last week uh, the bhutanese uh, premier was here and uh, prime minister also uh, going to bhutan and though his visit was uh, rescheduled because of the weather conditions but still uh, prime minister narendra the- kept his promise Vishal also, I mean, MOUs were also exchanged. Uh, order of Druk Gyalpo also being conferred on Prime Minister Narendra Modi, highest order. Uh, what message does it send out regarding uh, India's neighbourhood first policy? Well, uh, absolutely, it's an honour for the whole country and uh, Prime Minister being conferred the highest civilian award by the uh, Bhutanese uh, government. It does highlight that uh, it gives a lot of importance to India and also India making seven agreements, uh, including digital transactions, uh, space, agriculture. So, uh, India and Bhutan have been uh, growing uh, stronger and stronger by the day. And remember, uh, if we keep in mind... Uh, the uh, neighborhood uh, also there from uh, china uh, the strong bonding between the con- two countries it is very very important and also strategic uh, strategically is very crucial for india as far as the doklam issue is concerned all right uh, vishal will leave it at that thank you for your inputs moving on to our next story now india's external affairs minister dr ajay shankar who is on three nations visit began his singapore visit by paying homage to netaji and brave indian national army soldiers India's external affairs minister Dr Ajay Shankar is on an official visit to Malaysia, Singapore and Philippines from March 23rd to March 27th at the invitation of his counterparts. The three nation visit of Dr Ajay Shankar will focus on enhancing bilateral relations and would provide an opportunity for engagement on regional issues of mutual concern. and in a symbolic gesture of solidarity and appreciation for the brave soldiers serving at one of the world's most challenging terrains indian defense minister rajnath singh will be traveling to siachen glacier and taking part in the holy celebration at the location siachen glacier often referred to as the highest battlefield in the world is not only a strategic military outpost but also a testament to the resilience and sacrifice of indian armed forces personnel stationed there Now let's take a look at other stories making news today. India's Directorate General of Civil Aviation has imposed a financial penalty of 8 lakh rupees, in fact 80 lakh rupees on Air India Limited for violation of regulations. The penalty was slapped for violations of flight duty time limitations which is FDTL and fatigue management system which is FMS of the flight crew. A team of India's archaeological research body Archaeological Survey of India is continuing their survey at the Bhotshala complex in central state of Madhya Pradesh on this second day today the survey is being conducted to find the remains of temple of goddess Vagdevi that Hindus claim to have existed before Kamal Mola mosque in the same complex And ahead of the festival of colors holy people celebrated the festival at one of the largest and most popular ghats in Varanasi Assi ghat they play holy with flowers along with singing and dancing and putting colors on each other And as the blooming season of tulips arrives Asia's largest tulip garden situated in India's northern state UT of Jammu and Kashmir has opened its gate for the general public on Saturday. This gorgeous garden known as Indira Gandhi Memorial Tulip Garden is now a well-known landmark in the area. Formerly known as Siraj Park, the garden is spread over 55 acres of land that will display additional 5 new varieties of tulips to the existing 68 varieties this year. All right, we'll slip into a very short break but still to come on this edition of DD India Live. 
UN Security Council's vote on new Gaza ceasefire text postponed to Monday. Shareholders approve a merger to list ex-US President Donald Trump social media venture on the stock market. And Chilean scientists discover a rare species of sea lilies in the Antarctic. Real crackdown on corruption that the voters, the citizens of the country have been wanting and fighting for for decades or as the opposition claim an effort to cripple the opposition. Timing depends on the detection of the corruption. Then the timelines are fixed by the law. I will say the opposition has crippled itself. The manner in which they chose the timeline of response for all these notices that were coming to them. In ED when you are arrested, you are guilty until proven innocent. Now the thin condition is, the court cannot give you bail until you are innocent. But how will the court be innocent? Because you don't go into the facts of the matter in the bail hearing. Welcome back. You're watching DD India Live. I'm Abhishek Mahajan. In one of the deadliest attacks in Moscow, more than 60 people were killed and over 145 injured after the gunmen opened fire at the concert hall. The fire started with huge plumes of black smoke rising over the building, which can hold several thousand people and has hosted top international artists. The Russian authority is now focused on providing help to the people and searching for the criminals who are believed to be at large. And the governor of the Moscow region, Andrei Vorobyov, described the Friday's concert hall attack as a tragedy. He said that an operational headquarters has been set up. This is a tragedy. The burning area is very obvious. Firefighters are working hard on site. Further information will be released once the firefighters conclude their work. And the investigators found weapons and other evidence after camouflage-clad gunmen opened fire at concert goers near Moscow on Friday. The Russian investigative committee released footage of a rifle lying on the ground and staff examining spare gun magazines and spent bullet casings at the 6200-seat Crocker City Hall in Krasnogorsk where the attack occurred. All right, let's go across to TD India's Dasha Chanishova. She is joining us live from Moscow. Dasha, one of the deadliest attacks in Moscow and more than 60 people killed and over 145 uh, reported to be injured. What more you can tell us? Well, at the moment, we understand three kids are among those dead in this night, uh, Friday night attack in the Russian capital. We understand 120 are now in the Russian hospitals. They are treated, uh, they are receiving the medical help. But we also understand from the health authorities that at least, uh, at least half of them are in a difficult condition. So the understanding is that the death toll can increase. At the same time, about this hour, we expect the full list of those dead in this attack to be released by the Russian authorities. They are leading the investigation. They will also be conducting all the rescue operations on the first floor of the Crocus City Hall, which is right behind me. So the understanding is that the situation is obviously under control, but the plumes of smoke are still coming from the Crocus City Hall that has been engulfed by the fire. Mm. Uh, Dasha, also Russian authorities now focus uh, on providing help to the people like you're saying and the hunt also for the attackers is at full swing well we don't know yet much about the investigation it is ongoing that's what we know from the authorities president putin has been informed about this investigation but not much detail is provided to the public now we understand that the u.s embassy in moscow has warned of a possible terrorist attack about two weeks ago the Russian uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs said back then that this information should be shared with Moscow. And obviously, we understand that everything possible is now being done with the international community called on to share any information relevant to the
the investigation with Moscow. So certainly we are expecting more details to emerge on that front, but the authorities have remained tight-lipped when it comes to this probe, perhaps not to interfere with the investigation. All right, Dasha, I will leave it at that. Uh, thank you for getting us the latest from Moscow. World leaders expressed shock and extended condolences to victims of shooting near Moscow in Russia. Condemning the attack, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said India stands in solidarity with the government and the people of the Russian UN chief leaders from EU, Turkey and other world leaders to extended messages of solidarity with people of Russia in this hour of grief. Attack near Moscow at concert goers on Friday brought back the memory of 2004 Beslan school siege. The five gunmen dressed in a camouflage on Friday opened fire with automatic weapons at people at a concert in the Crocus City Hall near Moscow. Kremlin said Russian President Vladimir Putin was updated on the concert attack by FSB director. Putin wished a speedy recovery to those injured in the attack. Soon, global condemnation and messages of solidarity poured in. UN chief, United States and India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, among others, condemned the attack and sent their condolences. The images are just horrible um, and uh, just hard to watch. And our thoughts, obviously, are going to be with the, the victims of this terrible, terrible shooting attack. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi in his social media post on X said that we strongly condemn the heinous attack in Moscow. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of the victims. India stands in solidarity with the government and the people of the Russian Federation in this hour of grief. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned in the strongest possible terms. According to a statement attributable to Deputy Spokesperson Farhan Hug, the UN Secretary General said the Secretary General conveys his deep condolences to the bereaved families and the people of the government of the Russian Federation. He wishes those injured a speedy recovery. European Union spokesman Peter Stano in a statement posted on X said that EU is shocked and appalled by the reports of a terrorist attack in the Crocus City Hall in Moscow. The EU condemns any attacks against civilians. Our thoughts are with all those Russian citizens affected. Condemning the attack, French President Emmanuel Macron said in the statement that France stands in solidarity with the victims of the shooting. While German Foreign Office said that the images of the terrible attack on innocent people in Crocus City Hall near Moscow are horrific. The background must be investigated quickly. Our deepest condolences with the families of the victims. Following the attack, all entertainment and mass events were cancelled in Russia. A billboard near concert hall read a message, We grieve. Following the attack, firefighters had to battle a massive blaze as flames leaped into the sky and plumes of black smoke rise, rose above the venue. The emergency services evacuated hundreds of people while parts of the venue's roof collapsed. Islamic State has claimed the responsibility for the attack. Bureau report, DT India. And the UN Security Council vote on a new draft resolution that seeks an immediate ceasefire in Gaza has now been postponed for Monday. The vote will come after the United States put forward a text on the need for a ceasefire that was vetoed by Russia and China and opposed by Arab states on Friday. The draft resolution demands an immediate ceasefire for the ongoing Muslim holy month of Ramadan that leads to a permanent sustainable ceasefire respected by all sides. It also demands both the immediate and unconditional release of hostages seized in October 7 attack by Hamas and humanitarian access in Gaza. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres will visit Egypt's border with Gaza on Saturday to renew pleas for a ceasefire. Guterres will visit Al Arish in Egypt's northern Sinai, where much of the international relief for Gaza is delivered and stockpiled. He is also expected to visit a hospital in Al Arish and meet UN humanitarian workers in Rafah. His trip comes as Israel prepares to launch a major military operation in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. Now, Britain's Princess of Wales has announced she has been diagnosed with cancer. It follows weeks of speculation about her health after abdominal surgery earlier in the year. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London. And at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful, 
However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. This, of course, came as a huge shock, and William and I have been doing everything we can to process and manage this privately for the sake of our young family. Princess Catherine making this announcement in a video message that we're told was recorded in Windsor on Wednesday. But the cancer diagnosis has been known by William and Catherine since February. Catherine says in her message that she uh, discovered the cancer diagnosis after the major abdominal surgery that she had in January, which was thought to have been successful. At that time, we were told that Catherine wouldn't resume royal duties until after Easter. It may now be some time after that, given that she is now being treated for cancer with what she describes as preventative chemotherapy. A very difficult time indeed at the moment for Britain's royal family. King Charles is also being treated for cancer of some sort. We also don't know exactly what type of cancer King Charles is being treated for, and he's been treated as an outpatient. In a message via Buckingham Palace, we're told that the King is so proud of Catherine for her courage in speaking as she did. We've had messages from across the political spectrum too. Opposition Labour leader Keir Starmer has paid tribute, but also criticised the lurid speculation, as he describes it, about Catherine's health. And UK Prime Minister uh, Rishi Sunak says that when it comes to matters of health, like everyone else, Catherine must be afforded the privacy to focus on her treatment and be with her loving family. And Catherine has made that call for privacy herself in announcing to the country and to the world that she is being treated for cancer. Ollie Barrett in London reporting for DD India. And now let's take a look at other stories making news around the world. Former US President Donald Trump's social media company Truth Social is set to become a publicly traded entity. Shareholders approved a merger to list Trump's social media venture on the stock market, potentially providing $3 billion to the ex-US President on Friday, although he may not be able to access the funds for several months. Two people, including a young boy, were killed and dozens of others were injured in a Texas highway crash on Friday when a cement truck veered head-on into a school bus carrying more than 40 children on a field trip. Investigators were seeking to determine what led the cement truck to swerve into the path of the incoming school bus. Chilean scientists have discovered a rare species of sea lilies in the Antarctic. A specimen was first sighted during an expedition by the Chilean Antarctic Institute to Vega Island in the Sea of Weddell in early January 2024. Sea lilies use their many arms to move through the water and to feed with floating particles. The species is considered a crinoid and invertebrate from the Echinomardata phylum. Spots now, Indian Shatla, Kedar Mishrikan, Rajpas, Lee, Chia, Hao, 21-10, 21-14 in just 35 minutes to enter the semi-finals of Swiss Open. Srikant, who had struggled to put together back-to-back -to -back wins on the BWF Tour for months now, looked in great touch against the Chinese Taipei player who had beaten Lakshya Sen in pre-quarterfinals. Now he will take on Chinese Taipei's Lin Chun Ye in the semis. All right, that's all for this edition of Deer India Live. But do let us know your thoughts on the news of the day. You can connect with us on Facebook, X, formerly Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back with more news as it breaks air on Deer India. I'm Abhishek. From all of us here in Delhi, thanks for watching Deer India Live.